we're back. And if you've ever had a honey to-do list that is never ending, go ahead, hit the subscribe button right now. Seriously. And like the video. Uh, in today's video, we are on a haul and tow, and we're going to talk about the numbers from the first haul and tow, and then the numbers from this, which as a disclaimer, this was going to be a video initially where we tried to get as many loaded miles as possible. That got vetoed by the wife. She said, just get out there, hurry up, get back. So uh, that's kind of what we're doing. And yeah, stay tuned because we're gonna crunch the numbers for haul and tow. $250 later and the lights are fixed. Whoo! Well worth it, coming out of the old maintenance account. So the issue was right in the back between the wood decking and here, there was a wire that had worked itself loose and was periodically touching the metal, causing it to short out. So all is good, taken care of, and now we're on to the new adventure of a full trip of as many loaded miles as possible before the new baby driver is here. you're all but a foot in or a foot away and you keep getting stuck so probably the last hour just trying to get this little this last one on here oh, she kept, kept getting stuck thankfully one of the shuttle guys is here to save the day so he's gonna pull it up over here where it's more pack down and we'll get it hooked up boom and just like that two backups or two adjustments boom who said i couldn't back up please <laughs> i'm just joking uh, this thing surprisingly is a lot easier to back up than you would think but that's it just adjust a little bit get it hooked up and get on the road and then we will discuss the numbers of the first haul and tow and this one as an average. Even though I did just say that my backing up skills are better, they're still not so great that I don't try to find, if you can see this or not, that I don't try to find parking spots that aren't right next to the big rigs backing up. So I'm gonna head in, I'm gonna shower, and then when I get back out, I'm gonna work on tweaking my spreadsheet to work better with the haul and tow setup and just the more uh, complex pre and post trips, if you will. Um, that you you have uh, to be able to break down the numbers for our first two haul and tow, you know, and what we're averaging. So stay tuned to the end, and we're gonna dive in to those numbers. unloaded heading in got to grab the battery off the first one and then sign all the paperwork and maybe just maybe we're gonna get 
a backhaul car from Denver to Carlisle, which is like a 30 mile radius from where I live. So, let's see. door and some trim to you know put some final touches on the room for when we come back home with a baby uh, which was scheduled for tomorrow morning I get a call from my wife I actually had three missed calls uh, as I was loading that down strapping it down uh, that her water broke she's kind of freaking out but her mom had already came down because uh, she was going to stay the night and watch our our two-year-old while we're at the hospital. Um, yeah, so you're not going to see the numbers to uh, to the hall until yet. Uh, I got to go deliver a baby or something. <laughs> All right. Hey, stay tuned. Uh, we will dive in to the numbers. I promise. See you guys. Wish us luck. Okay, so after calling the wife back and she, they are on their way, they should be at the hospital in 35 minutes. We live in a smaller town from the Des Moines area. I'm gonna park this, at, hopefully at a Love's, and then we'll end up picking it back up on the way back. I'm, we'll see how it works. I'm sure, you know, people do, you know, their 34 hour resets, so sure if I pay for a few days you know. but I got to put the door in the cab because I can't leave that outside and the weather and whatnot so it's gonna be interesting follow along <laughs> So they're gonna let me park here free of charge, uh, even though it's gonna be three days ish. Yeah, all right, so park, unload the crap, and take a Lyft or Uber to the hospital. Get some to eat before I can, because who knows how crazy things are gonna be or how quick things are gonna happen. Okay, the room is livable, the baby is healthy, born, and my co-pilot on two days numbers. So, if you remember the trip analyzer spreadsheet that I have created, um, what I did was I went in and just adjusted it to where it allows for a kind of pre-backhaul and a post-backhaul 
um, where that outbound load is, you know, kind of your bread and butter. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and update that in the Google Sheets, and I will put a put a link in the description. Now, if you're watching this and you comment, hey, where's the, where's the spreadsheet? Whether it's over here or over here, you need to click that little down button where the title is, and then you'll see the description, you'll see a, a link. Now, don't click um, gain access or editable whatever. I have directions on there. If you just open it up in Google Sheets, uh, the very first cell right at the top tells you how to make it an editable um, worksheet for yourself. Because you may you may want to track, you know, things that I don't think are, are relevant. You'll be able to go in and edit it. Um, but I just, I don't open the emails that I get where it says, hey, such and such such at Gmail wants access to this. You just have to follow the directions. Whoa, you okay? You all right over there? Yeah. yeah. Um, but so with it, what I did, um, because life had had its curveballs with the first two trips, um, I didn't get the full haul and tow experience in terms of loaded towards Elkhart, the outbound, and then loaded back home. Um, like the load board, like Central Dispatch, will allow me to, from what it seems like on every trip, like from Des Moines to Chicago, there's always cars needing hauled in that direction at about the tune of $350 to $450, $500, um, depending on if they are drivable or not. And then every trip that I've looked at on booking on the Hall & Tow load board, uh, I then go to Central Dispatch, I look for, I search for vehicles, within that same route coming back, I never have an issue finding them. So uh, what I did was I broke it down to uh, if just the bare bones. If you're just outbound, so you're not doing any cars, uh, my actual numbers, and then best case scenario based off of what was available with the exact hauls that I had in terms of uh, hauling cars towards Indiana, and then maximizing cars on the way back and comparing those to two exact or identical single pole trips. You know, like, is it worth it even at the bare minimum of just driving unloaded? Because I'll tell you, uh, your fuel prices, at least my fuel prices are significantly higher. Uh, you know, I'm not driving a pickup truck anymore that when unloaded, regardless of if there's a, a full auxiliary tank or not, I'm averaging 20 miles a gallon. Um, I'm averaging eight to nine-ish, 10-ish miles per gallon with the Freightliner setup. So let's dive in. Right here are the single pole um, comparisons. So I have payout. Remember how, how I do things, which could be totally different from you and life still works. You're still awesome. Um, I'm still okay and the world's still spinning. So payout is on that final email, that settlement, final settlement. Oh, bless you. That final settlement, this is what was deposited onto my Calm Data card. I then put maintenance first, just because I'm taking a gr I'm taking 15% off the gross revenue. Um, just meaning that you know, when I go in and choose a load that, you know, it's a thousand miles at, you know, we'll just say a dollar a mile, then that trip pays a thousand dollars. I take 15% off of the gross revenue um, because whenever those big issues come up, as I <laughs> know firsthand um, now, so... Uh, you know, they're pricey. So I want to maximize the amount of money that I'm putting aside for when I need that capital to, to fix something or make something happen. So then it's, you know, the fuel that'll focus. So you have your fuel. And so what I call then after that take home is literally the money that you have in your pocket to be able to do whatever the heck you want to do with it. So you may or may not have a truck payment. 
Um, you, you get people that are like, oh, his, his numbers are misleading because of the truck payment. You got that pull fee, you got this and that. Well, the pull fee comes out before your payout number. Um, you never have access to that money. So um, let's keep things simple. So take home is literally the money that you put in your pocket. And really the reality of it is that maintenance is money that you put in your pocket. It's just you needing to be disciplined to transfer that over into a, a savings account before you decide it looks better in your personal account. And then you say, RV transports, there's no money in it. I blew my engine and uh, I can't do anything. Well, you, you have to be disciplined. Anyways, uh, I digress. Let's go back. So again, we're gonna dive into outbound only, my numbers and then fully loaded. And you know, what is it looking like? So when we first look at that outbound only, Again, you got the payout. I just took averages. So the average payout of single poles for those trips, you know, 1,000 to 1,100 is at 1,700. The average payout for just outbound only is 2,500. So almost an extra $1,000. And then, so everything in green right here is to your advantage. Um, you know, you're, you're in the green. Now, why is that 129 red? Well, it's just because you're paying 129. Oh, baby. Hey. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, oh, oh. oh you okay? You okay? Yeah, yeah, you all right, baby. Yeah, you're sleepy. Oh, life is rough. Yeah. So you're paying an additional $129 from what you would on average be paying if you're doing single pulse. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword in the sense of you're going to build up that maintenance account way faster. Um, but it's taking more, you know, of your take home flip side of that is you may just end up with a lot of extra cash that you can then decide to do something with. You know, say you have a threshold of $10,000, anything after that, you you pay yourself all cash, all money after above and beyond 10,000. So it's just to be noted that that could be money well saved or you could just adjust that percentage to be a little bit less um, so that you're not putting as much money aside. But I would say, me personally, I'm leaving that at 15%. And after a year of being in it, we'll see if adjusting that makes sense or, you know, just leave it how it is or, you know, whatever. But uh, I'm not going to jump the gun on adjusting that number because it's only helping you in the long run. Again, the discipline is just... Uh, transferring that money over once it hits your account, once you transfer it from your, you know, com data or whatever card you have to your personal checking account. And so then, you know, what is the take home? So on average, the take home for the single pulls, as far as like money to do whatever with pay bills, um, which could include your truck payment will include your insurance. Uh, you know, with single pulls, it was 1127. It was on average 1500 for just outbound only. So an extra $416 per trip. Uh, you know, essentially a $416 a week raise, if you will, if you're only doing the outbound only on the haul and toes. So that's still pretty awesome. Uh, you know, how do you give yourself a raise? It's not that you have to be on the road more, there's other options. Um, when we look at the uh, margin of things, you know, you're actually less profitable in the sense of just looking at the margin of take home versus payout. Um, but the reason for that is your expenses are higher. Your revenue is up, your expenses are up. So you're still making more money. And so now we'll dive into 
if you are fully loaded. And again, this is from Iowa, Indiana, um, and then out a thousand miles and back home. So here, you know, again, we look at the payout and this is if you were snagging a car, again, from the Des Moines area, essentially, and most of the time it was uh, to Chicago. Those are um, plentiful in the sense of there's, there's tons of cars on Central Dispatch. What I chose on pay was just middle of it, chose 400. The company takes 15%, so the number reflects 85% of the backhauls. And then when you look at the the backhauls from drop off back to Iowa, um, the first trip, I, again, I just, I plan these as how I saw them on Central Dispatch, um, even though I didn't book them. I booked one backhaul from Houston to Kansas City, and that paid out, like my final settlement was in the, mid 200s and then there was a car from Kansas City to Des Moines and that was 150ish so you know taking 85% of those is what is figured into the numbers but essentially so what I did was 400 on the first outbound headed east and then 300 on the way up so about $700 gross in cars and that was kind of the mindset of hey if i can get 700 dollars, it's going to cover basically all of my fuel if not almost all of it so then the take home is literally everything from that outbound trip so you know we have more in maintenance because the gross was higher and then that's why it's red font right there uh, it is an extra in addition from the single poles an extra 240 bucks and so the fuel averaged 641 dollars um again that could be more you know you i would assume if you're always loaded it's still gonna be a little bit less but from the two trips i was on um i have a feeling it's just you're gonna get a two mile per gallon range of loaded versus unloaded. So the take home on fully loaded was $2,166. Um, how much more is that? And so this, you know, the way I see it, this is a trip a week. So this is on a weekly basis. Um, you just gave yourself an extra thousand dollars a week to put in your pocket. And that's not too mistake it for that extra maintenance funds that are going in there. But again, don't get greedy, leave it in there um, because you never know when you're gonna need it. And again, then looking at just the profit margin of it, it's gonna be less profitable in terms of looking at the margin because your expenses are higher. One of them being that maintenance, you know, that can be adjusted, but I don't think it's wise to. So. Now, my actual numbers, you know, what I actually did over the last two trips was I had, again, one backhaul, just one car on the first trip from Texas to uh, Kansas City, and the rest of it was just outbound only. So when this focuses in, uh, my payout up on the top, my payout, you know, per trip was on average almost 2700 uh, 2687 is what it averaged. Uh, I averaged $400 in setting aside per trip on my maintenance. So I already got $800 set aside in my maintenance account from these two trips. And then on the fuel side, spent about 1200 bucks so far. But every trip, it's been $1,600 that I'm actually putting in my pocket. Opposed... To a thousand, you know, averaging eleven hundred. So, with a new little one, making this the third child, um, adding an extra five hundred dollars, with for the most part being unloaded almost all of the time when not on the outbound. That's not a bad setup. That's an extra two grand a month 
just by moving up into the haul and tow division. Now, the goal, and this is what I'm going to do on this next trip. Uh, well, maybe not this next trip because I'm going to, the goal is actually to go and get my truck, the, the old farm truck out in Salt Lake City. But my goal is to try to get as many loaded miles as possible. And if that's the case, then, you know, that's averaging an extra thousand dollars a week in your pocket. Uh, in addition to more money being set aside for your maintenance account, just a total win, 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 win. Um, so hopefully these numbers are insightful. And if you're somebody that was like me, that is interested in the haul and tow, uh, division of whatever company you run for, um, you know, maybe this helps you take that little leap of faith and, and make the jump. I know I was nervous, a little scared, uh, nerves are good um, in doing so. And I, I guess, you know, when you really look at it, I just got lucky that my truck had a major issue and it made more sense to get into a new rig opposed to fixing up the truck right away. So now I need the truck fixed because I need a daily driver, but um, we can figure that out. I can drive the SUV when I'm when I'm in town. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, I hope that you like the content. Uh, I will be back to a more regular schedule when it comes to posting content. You know, my goal is every Monday, every Friday, putting a video out. Um, not just for the sake of putting a video out, but to help provide value from you know this newbie coming in. Um, that has a, you know, the business mindset from being in business, uh, owning a gym, and again, giving some value, helping out where I can. So like, subscribe, share, uh, say something nice to Winter Johnson. Uh, yes, Winter with a Y. Uh, and we had awesome boy names. We had a boy name picked and we never really had a girl's name and we didn't know what we were having. So yeah, we went with winter, had her during a blizzard. All right. Hey, that is it. So again, uh, like subscribe, share, and I will see you on the road.